We're comparing the most common grocery items in the US and UK. How do the US and UK standard grocery items compare in size? In the UK, the largest milk container is six pints. That's around 3.4 liters of milk. Whereas in the US, we commonly see one gallon jugs of milk, which works out to be 3.7 liters or 6.66 imperial pints. <laughs> the gallon jug from America is bigger than our largest size, but only by around 8.8%. It's quite rare to see someone buy these. I think only really big families will buy these or maybe like an office that caters for a lot of people. The fact that Americans can buy bigger milk sizes than we can might have something to do with the fact that their milk actually lasts longer. That's due to differences in the pasteurization process. Right here is an average US chicken breast you get at a grocery store. Here's an average chicken breast in the UK. Let's find out how much it weighs. American chicken is banned in the UK. In the US, chicken is washed in a chlorine bath before being sent out to consumers. This is to stop the spread of bacteria like salmonella because American chickens are kept in worse conditions when compared to the UK's. The farming standards in the UK ensure less risk of chickens becoming contaminated in the farming process and therefore we don't need to rinse ours in chlorine before people eat them. The UK also won't accept our beef. They banned the use of growth hormones in 1989, but not in the US, baby. The FDA is totally cool with our cows getting roided up. I did most of the shopping for this episode in a Sainsbury's, which happens to be my local supermarket. The biggest steak I was able to find was this one, a thick cut rump steak weighing 450 grams. I went to our local Vons and grabbed any ribeye. This one here is a little over a pound. It's about 485 grams. And any American will tell you, this is probably an average size steak you would get at one of our grocery stores. I looked at Walmart and I saw they had a ribeye that's almost two pounds or 907 grams. This is not uncommon, and I would not be surprised to see even bigger in the Midwest or Texas. Obviously, we have a ton of American brands on sale at UK grocery stores, things like Coca-Cola, Oreos, or Kellogg's. But also, most supermarkets in the UK will have an American section, which contain products which I think Brits assume are big in the States. Here is a selection of items I found in one of those aisles. And here are the UK items most commonly found in our UK, international, or sometimes ethnic section of US grocery stores. The US loves a sugary cereal, and that is reflected in the US sections of British supermarkets. Today, I was able to find some Lucky Charms. Our cereals trend much more towards being high in fiber, low in sugar. Try and get a, uh, a spoonful with several of the charms in it. The bulk of it, these brown pieces, are just kind of like Cheerios almost. I'm just not convinced about marshmallows. Like They're just not needed in this, I don't think. And I think of the American cereals that I've tried, these are one of the better ones, Lucky Charms. The milk in the bottom is kind of taking on all the color from all of them and becoming this kind of like purpley color. Other cereals you might be able to find include things like Fruit Loops, maybe Captain Crunch, but I think these are enough for me. Weetabix, one of the most popular cereals over there in the UK, or so we are led to believe in the US. I have had this before and uh, I'm not a fan. First thing I think is uh, interesting about this, everyone not in the UK, is that it comes in these like blocks. This looks like it's shredded old newspapers. So I guess you would have two. And look at the me look at the mess it's already made, just taking two out. What the hell's going on over in the UK? What are you guys doing? I guess I'd just do this, right? Listen to that. The least enjoyable way to start your breakfast. I mean, it's it's sogging up because of the milk, so that's a good-ish thing. I don't like our sweet American cereals. I want to get that out of the way here. I, I never go for the US sweet cereals. I don't like them in the morning. But this is like the opposite problem where it was so flavorless and bland. A very popular item that I cannot get today that you guys have for breakfast, something called Ready Breck Porridge. When I went to the shop that carries a lot of the UK grocery items, I asked the lady if they had Ready Breck Porridge. Her response was, and I quote, yuck. Why? What is the difference between porridge and oatmeal? Porridge can be made with a variety of grains and cereals, whereas oatmeal is just oats. Thank you, Harry. No porridge for the filming of this video. Another American import when it comes to breakfast foods in the UK are these toaster pastries. Weirdly, we had two brands available when I went in. We had Toastum Pop-Ups. And of course, we have Pop-Tarts. These are the frosted chocolate versions, but you can also find these strawberry ones. We did do a whole episode on Pop-Tarts at one point, and my opinions on them haven't really changed since then. For me, Pop-Tarts are not really a breakfast food. I think they're more like a sweet snack. The amount of sugar in here is kind of crazy when compared to pretty much any other breakfast offering here in the UK. They are tasty, don't get me wrong. A lot of sauces and spread from the UK we have here in the US. I'm gonna try some, I'm gonna do so. I have some 
toast. My cat's got into the bread this morning, so uh, most of this is going in the garbage, but I was able to salvage a few non-cat chewed on pieces of bread. Starting down here, Branson pickle. What is this? Relish? Oh, oh, oh no, what the hell is this? Good Lord, United Kingdom, what is wrong with you? Uh, it smells really vinegary and also not good. Oh, the crunchiness of the vegetables in here, really, really, it's a really bizarre texture. But after it, it's like really vinegary. And if I just, like if it's just, the sauce without the veggies, not bad, but. Apparently it's been around for a hundred years. Congratulations. Branson pickle is fantastic. Not a fan. Coleman's mustard. I, I bet this mustard's really strong. Before I open this, I feel like this is sinus cleansing <laughs> mustard. Whoa. Oh wow, that's so strong. I think this would be really good on like a brat or a, a, a sausage. Yeah, it's got a kick to it, ooh. But it's a little like addictive. Marmite, not at all a fan of this. I've had it a few times before. It's just so bizarre. It's vegan, rich in B vitamins. That's an interesting selling point. Wake up your taste buds. Put the oomph in your breakfast. Ay. I've noted before it has a consistency of earwax. People who eat this have told me that you really are only supposed to take like a dab of it, a very little. This is, already, I've been told already this is too much. It's so, this isn't the right word, but like salty, but it's not, it's not like high in sodium. I can see why people would swear by this because it is such a unique flavor. It's so strong. Landfills in America must be filled with barely touched jars of Marmite because everyone's like, oh, I heard it's popular. Taste, this is the worst thing ever. Trash. I'm an HP sauce boy through and through. HP sauce, if you're listening, I will help you make this more popular in America. Call me, let's talk, let's make it happen. It's not like A1, but it is an A1-ish brown sauce. It's fantastic. I had this the first time when I went over to the UK in like 2000, I couldn't believe it. I was putting it on everything. I love it. I always have a bottle. You don't put HP sauce on toast. Definitely something you'd put on an English breakfast. A, vin a more vinegary A1 for America, if that makes sense. That's like a good tang. I could put this on just about everything. This makes up for all this. Although, the Coleman's mustard, hmm. I'll take it home. Moving on, we have some more snacks, which are considered kind of American here in the UK. Firstly, we have this beef jerky. Beef jerky is something which Brits are very much aware of. I think even more so than an American thing, we might consider this to be South African. You often see it in stores labeled as biltong, which I think is kind of the South African term for beef jerky. But as far as I can tell, pretty much the same thing. It's effectively just dried pieces of meat. It always smells quite bad coming out of the packet. It smells worse than it tastes. It actually tastes pretty good. It's got a satisfying chew to it. Nice and salty. In my supermarket, I was able to find an American jar of peanut butter. I love peanut butter personally, and I do think most Brits do as well. It's pretty popular. Weirdly, like we don't have that many brands that sell peanut butter. I will just often buy whichever supermarket I'm in's own brand. One thing I will say, while we're on the subject of American peanut butter, no one's really eating PB&J here in the UK. Not a super common flavor combination. I have done it before, it's lovely. When I think of the US, that is kind of the archetypal sandwich that I think of. One thing that's really common to find in an American section at a supermarket are these. These are giant marshmallows. Marshmallows are a strange one because I don't really think anyone in the UK is like getting these to snack on. Maybe very few people are doing that. We don't really have that s'mores culture. Mini ones for hot chocolate, sure. The only other thing really that marshmallows are used for is like Rice Krispie treats here in the UK which I do love. We also have marshmallow fluff. This is one thing that's funny to me because when I was growing up, I was led to believe that this was very popular in America, that Americans ate this all the time. I was given a fluff and nutter sandwich at one point, which is peanut butter and marshmallow fluff. And it was pretty good, if a bit, you know, claggy in the mouth. Although it seems like maybe this isn't as popular in the US as I was told, and I've been living a lie my whole life. Used directly from container on crackers or in hot cocoa. Use it as an ice cream topping, if you microwave it. Oh, no, 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 no. For a super fruit dip, mix 200 grams of cream cheese and one jar of marshmallow fluff. That's a legitimate instruction. Apparently you dip fruit in that. Heinz baked beans. You guys love your baked beans over there. One thing that differentiates these baked beans from the baked beans we're used from in America is more of a tomato-based sauce. So you guys have these apparently for breakfast or all the time. 
Uh, our baked beans have more of a barbecue, sweeter flavor to it. This, this I'm not into. First of all, you can see these beans right here, USA. Redder, like almost like a SpaghettiO sauce. I don't mind these types of beans. I don't know if this would be my go-to breakfast. I did have something like this in the UK and not like this, but definitely had it like at a place. I thought it was just fine. So I'm going cold beans on this one. It's just like if I was currently held up during the zombie apocalypse. I was eating to survive, just cold beans out of the can on toast. Here we go. It's better than it looks, USA. It's just why this, I'm not quite sure. I bet it's better warm. Uh, yeah, this is like, this is what you guys eat. Beans on toast, fantastic. Honestly, I don't understand the American's problem with it. If you try British beans on toast, you'll get it. Other popular canned UK items we got here. Uh, Mushy peas, I don't have a can opener, I'm not opening this. Not popular in the US at all. I never see any sort of mush or mashed peas. For those of you who don't know, it's seemingly mashed potatoes, but peas instead of potatoes. No thank you. I had it at uh, the UK. This can stay over there. You can also get the UK version of Heinz tomato soup. Regular peas, Ireland's favorite. Salad cream. Doesn't at first glance you're like, oh, it's cream made out of salad, right? mayo for your salad? Like, is this supposed to be salad dressing? Whoa, nope. Oh, wow, that's very bad. Uh, it tastes like mayonnaise that's gone bad. UK, you love your tea, you love your biscuits. Obviously, you have so many brands to choose from. These are some of the most popular here in the United States with the tea starting down here. PG Tips, we got PG Tips. I stay in London every once in a while for work, and one of our producers, Leon, when I told him these were the brand in my hotel room, he said these are absolutely the worst ones. Taifu, fun fact, when we were in New York shooting food tours, I stayed with Harry and another Brit, Charlie, who was producing that series. And Harry was definitely drinking these. I don't know if he got them when he got here or these are the ones he brought from the UK. Anyway, these are Harry's choice right there. Right, Harry? You like the Taifus? He was drinking them in our Airbnb anyway. And these last ones, Yorkshire tea. I feel like I see these all the time. The tea has been. Beruin, I'm told it's supposed to be at least two minutes, Yuli. Get the PG tips, Leon's choice. To get Leon does f with it on there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it tastes like tea. I don't get tea. It all tastes the same. I don't think I've ever enjoyed a cup of tea that hasn't had alcohol in it. But as far as taste and relaxation, tea's never done it for me. This is the Thai Fu. All right, Thai Fu versus tips, here we go. Very low. This is a stronger flavor, maybe because the tea bags in there longer? I don't know. And finally, Yorkshire tea. From the Shire of York, Old York, not the new one. That's here. It's all the same. It's all the same. So this is boring and I'm not enjoying it. But you guys love your biscuits, your digestives, huh? Got digestives, got hobnobs, rich tea. What's the best combination? The most boring looking cookie stroke biscuit ever. Uh, I'll, tip, I'll dip it in this one, PG tips. I'm under the impression that these are called digestives because they help with digestion. Uh, that's the most basic cookie I've ever eaten. Let's go to now, let's go to Hobnobs. Hobnobs, I'm liking the look at this. I got the chocolate ones. Get a load of this, you fuddy duddies. Yeah, mm. better, but the chocolate is the main reason. I know everyone's watching this going, there's better tea and there's better biscuits, I believe it. First I'll go dry. Oh, God, it's the worst one. I don't know why, but I want Thai food to be the best one. I think because of its packaging. I like it, I like its vibe. It's just completely flavorless. I will say though, I have been to the UK and we did do an actual afternoon tea or Sunday tea, I think it was. Check out that episode. And I did love the teas and I did love the food that they offered. I actually had a really great time. This does not reflect that at all. But as far as just these packaged crackers and these, box, these boxes of these teas, no thanks. In the UK, you might also be able to find some American drinks. The one I found today was root beer. I actually kind of like root beer. I've now been on a few trips to the US and have tried it on a couple of occasions and gotta say, pretty good. I've had much better root beer than that, that's kind of bad. I think the best comparison I could make for a British audience is Dandelion and Burdock, which is now kind of like a slightly outdated fizzy drink. So upon closer inspection, we thought this was an American soda import, but it turns out it might not be. This is AW branded. Whereas the American version is A and W with the ampersand in there. This one is actually just produced in the UK. I think they're kind of imitating the American brand, which is a little bit cheeky. 
and explains why there is quite a big taste difference between this and an American root beer, which I've tried. I'm also noticing Gatorade trying to make its way into the UK market recently. I wasn't able to find any today, but I definitely have seen it in off licenses before and certain supermarkets. I've had a lot of Gatorade in the US. It's quite good for food shoots, feel like I need to rehydrate like an athlete. I'm a big fan of the Glacier Freeze one. There's more to drink than tea in the UK. For instance, these two seemingly popular beverages over there, the Rabina and the Robinsons. Uh, one thing that strikes me as unusual about these types of drinks is that you're supposed to dilute them. You don't drink them straight out of the bottle. We really don't have anything like this in America. I'm sure there is, but the idea of getting a bottle of juice and then having to like mix it with water, we don't have the time. This one specifically, black currant. Also, black currant, not a popular flavor in the US. In America, like 100 years ago, black currants were also harboring some sort of uh, bug or fungus that was killing all plants, so they got rid of it. And we didn't have it for like 100 years. And all the while, another purple flavor of fruit came to popularity, AKA the grape. So when black currants now can totally be in the US, people just don't know when they see purple, they think grape in the US, right? Yeah, not in the UK apparently. So this is not grape flavored America. This is black currant flavored. I don't know what it tastes like either. Ooh, I don't like the smell of that. It's saying uh, one part squash juice, I'm assuming and four parts water. Okay, all right. I think I might be warming up to this concept of, of, of mixing it before you drink it. But I think, because I'm doing it sparkling, which is like making it actually pretty refreshing. And yeah, I'm not too familiar with black currant, but it, it's a little, it's like a tartar cranberry. Yeah, all right. I like that. How do you like that? Someone's visiting the UK and getting this and being like, yeah, this looks good and just like housing, I mean, I have to know. Ugh, yeah. Ooh, ooh. Robinson's real fruit. We got lemon. I think this is the same thing. Apparently we're seeing online that some people are bragging that they don't mix it. All right, blokes. Trying to impress the ladies by just going straight to the neck with the real fruit Robinson's. I'll try that out. <laughs> don't do that. Oh, whoa. I bet this is great for mixing cocktails. It's like lemon concentrate. Who doesn't love lemonade? This is actually very good. I think if they, if they uh, advertise like that in America, like, oh, they could be like, don't let those fat cat politicians at, uh, in Washington decide how diluted your juice is. If you're a Brit looking for a classic American style hot dog, we have Dino's branded goods in the UK. I was able to find the classic American style hot dogs, some sliced pickles and some crispy onions. These are pretty heavily marketed as being American products. So I assume they are big in America, right? Hi, hot dog loving American over here. Never heard of Dino's in my entire life. I mean, the cooking instructions are to place them in a pan and warm them for five to seven minutes. We don't have a pan here, we do have a microwave. Laura's gonna microwave me a dog. <laughs> oh, there's white stuff on the hot dog. Oh, Thanks, God, Laura. Listening. Let's make a uh, authentic American hot dog. I got some nice buns here. Lay that in there. Beautiful. I don't think I have any sauce. Pickles in a hot dog, that's like a Chicago thing, right? So here we go, I'm assembling my authentic American Brooklyn style hot dog, <laughs> which currently consists of quite a dry bun with no sauce, a large jumbo sausage, pickles, and crispy onions. I've eaten a lot of bad things in my life and this looks like one of the worst. I just can't believe these are the real authentic hot dogs you guys are eating in America all the time. The Americans on the team have now pointed out that dinos as well as epic snacks might not be as American as they're advertised to be. Despite the fact that they both sit in the American section of the supermarket, they're actually both owned by the UK brand, Urban Food Brands. I should probably have guessed by the fact that most American meat cannot legally be sold in the UK. American sections of British supermarkets contain a lot of candy or sweets, as we would say. One thing I was able to find were Jolly Ranchers. I have tried these before. All in all, I would say I'm a fan of like sour candy within reason. Not gonna do any sour candy challenges here. The color might slightly alarm Brits who aren't used to the food colorings. Got our good friends, Red 40 and Yellow 5 in here, but they are tasty. Yeah, just like, you know, a sourer than average hard candy. Hey, I know UK is holding it down for chocolate. We've done the episodes before. You guys got the good stuff. So whenever I get a chance to try some, I'm very excited. Right here, starting off the Mars bar. UK chocolate is very good. I'm a fan. Mmm. Your caramel is good too. Yeah, this is like a Milky Way to us. Bounty. Love chocolate and coconuts. So good, oh my God. Lion bar, gur gur baby. Looks a little bit like a turd, that's not a good sign. Wafers and Krispies, US candy heads in the comments. 
Is this something that we have that I'm not aware of? This is like a Kit Kat covered in Krispies, covered in chocolate with caramel in it. Good, good, good setup on this one. Yo, let's get those lion bars in the US. One thing that I found a lot of in my supermarket was nerds. We have these grape and strawberry nerds. Nerds fruits, which also seems to be in partnership with Wonka for some reason. The Timmy Chalamet version, phenomenal, by the way. I, there's a genuine chance that Timmy Chalamet is one of my Spotify wrapped top artists this year, because I've listened to the Wonka soundtrack a lot. Here we have the watermelon and cherry nerds. I kind of want to try the nerds rope, because I feel like this is one of the things that I always see online people raving about. So like a kind of like gummy rope that is coated in nerds. Look pretty good. Get some, some texture contrast going on there. I didn't have a lot to choose from, so this is the Aero Peppermints. Take a look at this, yeah. No. For the chocolate, last and not least, I have had a Curly Whirly before. I love these things. I feel like these are more marketed towards kids. This is so smart. Check this out. It's just the swirls of caramel covered in chocolate. There's no, there's no cookie or anything in here. It's just chocolate covered caramel in this like weird shape. I love these so much. We have so many US versus UK chocolate episodes. Go ahead and watch them after this, please. Don't leave yet. Well, now Harry's holding up with our chocolate. Probably not very good. We are able to get Hershey's brand chocolate here in the UK. I actually found a few different varieties. We have obviously the standard Hershey's milk chocolate. We have cookies and chocolate and cookies and cream salted caramel. Honestly, I think it's brave of Hershey's to even try and sell things in the UK because our chocolate is way better than American chocolate. Hershey's always feels quite grainy. It can have a slightly almost vomity aftertaste, which is really unpleasant. I don't understand how anyone would walk into a British supermarket with the dairy milk with the galaxy chocolate on offer and think, no, I want Hershey's. I've never tried the cookies and cream though. Is this better or worse than the milk? Let's find out. Mm. <laughs> Somehow worse. That's like biting into a brick of sugar. America just can't do chocolate very well and that's fine. So non-chocolate candy that uh, you guys have, fruit gums, not gummies, gums. I mean, is this just uh, fruit candies? Okay. I've been informed that these are no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. Oh. There's a weird one in here. I think it might be black currant. They're not terrible, it's not that good. Another American classic, Mike and Ike's. These are the sour mega mix version. Looks kind of just like a long jelly bean. Yeah, texturally basically a jelly bean. Again, it's just these vibrant colors that you really don't see in the UK anymore. <laughs> Visually spectacular. We also have Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. These are one that I think, again, has kind of transcended the line now between being an American candy and just being a sweet that we have in the UK. These are the bigger cup versions. I have to say, overall, I do like these, even though it's the American chocolate and also the American peanut butter. I think I'm just such a sucker for peanut and chocolate as a combo that I'm willing to overlook those things when it comes to a Reese's cup. One of the best flavor combinations, hands down. Depending on which supermarket you go to, you might be able to find other options as well. I've definitely seen things like Twizzlers in the past, maybe Butterfingers or like Hershey's chocolate syrup. Now let's take a look at some items which are the same in both countries, but go by different names. For instance, these UK cereals are called Frosties, Cocoa Pops, and Sultana brand. We also have Curiously Cinnamon, which unfortunately I couldn't find today. In the US, we call them Frosted Flakes, Cocoa Krispies, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, and Raisin Bran. In the UK, we call this vegetable an aubergine, and this one a courgette. The little leafy herb that you might sprinkle on a taco, that's called coriander. In the US, we call them zucchini, eggplant, and cilantro. The average UK family spends around 5,304 pounds a year on groceries. In the US, the household spending average is $5,700. Regardless of what the average household is purchasing, the money will probably go to one of these 10 corporations. What about the prices of common items in both countries? Ground beef makes up 40% of the US beef sales. The average price per pound is $4.43. In the UK, the average cost of minced beef per kilogram is £6.84. Once again, our meat is less expensive. I've been to the UK and I've tasted their chicken and their beef. Gotta say, not impressed. I could not disagree more strongly, Joe. Having now done a bunch of trips with you as well, trying the beef, trying the chicken in both countries, British beef is clear by miles. Chicken, maybe the difference is slightly less noticeable, but I have to say, yeah, the beef, Man, you can really taste the difference in quality. It turns out that the US imposes a sizable markup on imported British items. For example, here in the UK, our smallest Marmite jar is around £2.50. Over in the US, that same jar will cost you $9.99, which is around £8. Can't live without your beans on toast? 
Well, it's gonna cost you. A tin of baked beans at a Tesco will cost you around £1.40. US cans are actually slightly smaller and will cost you around £4.37. Americans are paying almost a dollar more per 100 grams for their baked beans than we are. Is it the same the other way? Let's look at US imports in the UK. These strawberry Pop-Tarts in the US run about $3.99. In the UK, they're about £3.30. Yes, it is more. This box of 10 Twinkies in the US is shockingly cheap, about $4. In the UK, I'm seeing the same box for six pounds. Now I know it's just a few pounds or dollars, but I have to say it, at any price, not worth it. Tesco is the UK's most popular grocery chain, with Tesco Express being its most common format. The average size of a Tesco is around 3,000 square feet. Our biggest is Walmart, with its supercenters being the most popular store. A Walmart supercenter in the US is 187,000 square feet. Perhaps a fairer comparison would be a US Walmart versus a UK Asda. Asda, which is actually owned by Walmart, has larger stores on average because they tend not to operate in city centers. An Asda superstore, or as we say in the UK, a big Asda, is around 60,000 square feet. In the US each week, 255 million people visit Walmart. It employs 1.6 million people. Tesco in the UK employs over 300,000 people. It says it serves millions of people every week, but doesn't provide a specific number. They do claim that 70% of the UK population lives less than five kilometers away from a Tesco. They are pretty ubiquitous. The UK has regulations that supermarkets have to adhere to. For example, the width of the aisles has to be at least 1,200 millimeters or 47 inches to allow customers with mobility issues to access them. The ADA requires aisles to be a minimum of 36 inches or 914.5 millimeters. Bigger stores often means more variety. Tesco in the UK offers around 90,000 products. Whereas Walmart has 140,000 products in stores. One thing I don't think the US is clamoring for is haggis. Shout out to Scotland. Haggis has been banned in the US since 1971 because it has sheep's lung in it. All livestock lungs in the US are regulated and forbidden because fluids like stomach acid from the animal can get trapped in the lungs. This can increase to the presence of microorganisms and environmental toxins. We'll stick with our delicious Red 40, thank you very much. It also turns out that Kinder Eggs are banned in the US. The US has a rule prohibiting non-nutritive objects in food. In this case, it's the little plastic egg containing a toy. Worth noting that Kinder Joy candy is still allowed in the US. Something about Kinder Chocolate, man. It's so delicious. And there it is. Let's see what we got as well. Beautiful. It's very funny to me that Americans will put chlorine and various other chemicals in their food but they draw the line at little koalas. Because the US stores are so much bigger, they tend to cater more towards bulk buying, which I think in general is more of a US thing. I think partly due to economic factors, people are starting to bulk buy slightly more here in the UK, but I'd say overall, still more of an American thing. Joe, are you a bulk shopper? Absolutely, my pantry is packed with dry goods, toilet paper, dried mango. I am ready for the next pandemic. In the UK, it's pretty common to find food products with the Union Jack flag on them. When they see this, Brits are led to believe that by buying that product, they're supporting local farmers. There has been some controversy because all the flag means is that the manufacturer is in Britain, while the food can contain ingredients from elsewhere. When you're checking out at a UK supermarket, you bag your own groceries. Is that not the case in the US, Joe? Nope. Usually it's a cashier or bagger who bags our groceries. Last time I was in a grocery store in London, I mentioned something about bagging my order, and she paused for a moment and then asked, are you from the States? in which I realized she wasn't bagging anything. 